There's a song that I love. Um, it's by a band called Big Daddy Weave, and it's called My Story. Here's a few of the lyrics. It says, if I told you my story, you would hear hope that wouldn't let go. If I told you my story, you would hear love that never gave up. If I told you my story, you would hear life, but it wasn't mine. If I should speak, then let, then let it be of the grace that is greater than all my sin. Of when justice was served and where mercy wins. Of the kindness of Jesus that draws me in. Oh, to tell you my story is to tell of him. Um, I don't know how else to tell my story besides how I've discovered Jesus Christ through it, just like Catherine shared. Um, there's a, a talk that Elder Bednar gave um, a couple years ago, and I just loved it. It was called Bear Up Your Burdens with Bear Up Their Burdens with Ease, and I'm going to share a quote from that. And as, he, as I share this quote, I want you to think about your own personal experience of where you are right now, what brings you here today. It says, each of us also carries a load. Our individual load is comprised of demands and opportunities, obligations and privileges, afflictions and blessings, opportunity options and constraints. Two guiding questions can be helpful as we periodically and prayerfully assess our load. Is the load I'm carrying producing the spiritual traction that will enable me to press forward with faith in Christ on the straight and narrow path and avoid getting stuck? Is the load I am carrying creating sufficient spiritual traction so I can ultimately return home to Heavenly Father? Now, all of you are carrying a load. We felt some of that load here today um, through tears shed, hearts being opened. You wouldn't be here if there was not some load that, was, that you were carrying. Now, I love what Elder Bednar asked us. Are we using that load to gain spiritual traction to move towards him? Or are we allowing it to keep us stuck? I've allowed it to keep me stuck for a lot of my life. But as I learn to use it to gain traction towards becoming more of like him and, and, and learning more of him, it helped me move forward. So I'd invite you to get curious about yourself and how you're using your load. Is it moving you forward? And if it's not, why? What's in the way of preventing that from happening? And there's no shame in that at all. That, we're all here for different reasons. I just invite you into some curiosity about how you can use your individual load to move you more towards him. Um, I'm gonna share some personal experiences real quick. I'm gonna introduce you to my younger self. <laughs> sure didn't think that. <laughs> She'll be here in just a minute. This is me when I was probably 14 or 15 years old um, at my favorite place in the world, which is Disneyland. I kept telling Mary, I was just like, hey, I'm, there's been a lot of difficulties lately. And I'm like, I just want to go to Disneyland. Like, please, <laughs> I guess just where you want to go. But life is not Disneyland, dang it, right? Um, so me at this age, I was, um, I hated myself, I'll be honest. I didn't like how I looked, I didn't like how I didn't have many friends, I didn't like really anything, and I started to also become aware of my same-sex attraction around this age, and started carrying a heavy load that was confusing, overwhelming, and lonely. Maybe you can relate. And, your, and whatever your particular load is. I didn't know what to do with this. I started to take on a lot of shame stories about myself, that I was, God hated me. He wouldn't allow this to be a part of my life if he loved me, right? Or I, I feared if I had told anybody about being gay or identifying as same-sex attracted, I would be rejected. No one would want to be my friend. And so I kept this hidden for so long. The stories this younger version of myself carried with me a lot of years forward. I had a very loving family, very loving. But despite all that, I still took on a lot of messages about myself. 
I carried this um, into college and onto my mission. You know, I think a lot of us have these ideas. If we do these certain things, God will take this away. But that's not the case. And I, I will tell, explain in just a minute why I'm grateful for that. Um, but I hit a breaking point later in life. Um, part of my story is I, um, I married an amazing woman, Mary, um, who's a saint. Um, but that's my story, right? It doesn't, I'm not saying that has to be your story. I'm just sharing you part of my story. But nine months into marriage, things got rough. We hit rock bottom. I told her about everything. It rocked her world. It rocked my world. I didn't know where else to go. Um, almost took my life. It was a really dark spot for me. But what happened was it opened me up. Sometimes I feel like we have to hit rock bottom so that we can start to go up again. And that's what it was. It opened me up to learning how to receive him. I remember growing up asking my dad, like, Dad, how do I access Christ? Like, how do you use the atonement? It made zero sense to me. But it's through my experience of this that I learned how. And that's what I want to share with you, is, is how we can do this. I remember, I, so I started therapy, and my therapist was amazing. And one of the first sessions he did with me, it was, I was working through a lot of this pain. And he shared a scripture with me in um, 2 Nephi 2.25. Sorry, my notes got all mixed up here. Um, and this scripture says, Adam fell that men might be, and men are that they might have joy. And I would kind of laughed. I was like, what? <laughs> You're telling me I can have joy? He's like, this is your new mission and statement in life, Spencer. You need to learn how to make this find joy in this. And I was, I was like, that is inconceivable. How is that even possible, right? All these pain stories I'd carried for so long to hear somebody say there's joy to be found, it just didn't make sense. But as we continued to work through things and I continued to address things, I learned so much and I became so much more. Um, the scripture in Alma really spoke to me a lot. Alma 36, and this is Alma the Younger's story. Um, I always resonated with, with his experience somewhat. I even talk about this on my mission for I will talk about this experience. But it, the, the scripture is chapter 20, or verse 20 and 21 in Alma 36. And it says, Oh, what joy and what marvelous light I did behold. Yea, my soul was filled with joy, as exceeding as was my pain. Yea, I say unto you, my son, that there could be nothing so exquisite and so bitter as were my pains. Yea, and again, I say unto you, my son, that on the other hand, there can be nothing so exquisite and sweet as was my joy. I learned that by addressing pain, my soul expanded to feel more joy. I testify to you, there is truth in that. It's not easy addressing pain. We're not taught well how to do it in society. Look at politics, right? It's blaming all over the place versus sitting in pain. And I love that out that God allowed Alma the Younger to sit in pain, and his was only three days. Some of ours is 20 years, 30 years of pain. But what I started to learn in therapy was what I was willing to start looking at it, naming my pain, and learning to invite Christ into it. My soul started expanding to feel more joy. Christ holds this beautiful tension of joy and pain. He can help validate our pain, but by doing that, he can expand us to feel more joy. And I testify to you to that. There is truth and power in that. I invite you into that. There is pain that you're carrying. Don't run from it. Get curious about it. Let it teach you and invite Christ in there to help heal it so you can move forward and become more who you're meant to be. So that's one lesson I learned. Another lesson I learned was learning to see myself in the way that Christ sees me. I had all these misperceptions about myself. I'd started to take it on. This younger self of mine had a lot of false perceptions about who I was, a lot of shame stories. But as I began to explore things, um, my therapist actually had me bring in this picture. He's like, we need to go back and revisit this, these messages that you have been taking on with yourself. And so he had me look at the, into the eyes of my younger self and be like, Spencer, what are you telling yourself about your 15-year-old self? And I went through a lot of things. Um, and then he had me look in a mirror and be like, what are you telling your current self? <laughs> and a lot of them were the similar messages. 
But he said, can you look back at your younger self through the lens of Christ and see yourself differently? Can you look upon your younger self with a little bit more grace, a little bit more compassion? And so I did. And what I started to see was this younger self who was so strong. <laughs> I'd never owned that about myself. I was carrying a heavy load by myself for a lot of years. I was able to own resiliency, faith, not giving up, messing up, but keep trying. I was able to own that about myself through the help of Christ. And then he had me look back at myself in the, in the mirror, and I was able to see myself a little differently. I've learned that seeking to see ourselves through Christ's eyes is so powerful. He holds the truth to who you are. And as I have learned to let him validate me, first and foremost, all these shame stories melt away, and I come to know better more who I am. So I invite you to do that. I invite you to see yourself with more grace, more compassion, more love, and it will take you on a beautiful journey of continuing to grow and become and develop. Christ doesn't see ourselves so often the way that we see ourselves. And so I challenge you to see things a little differently through his eyes. Last thing real quick, and then what we, I would love to hear, I think we'll, this will tie into the music we're going to hear from the Oaks family, the Oaks Baker family, which we're so excited about. As I learned to start to see myself through Christ's eyes, and it's a continual process through me, okay? I've gone through a lot of my own shame stories this week, even where I'm like, okay, ugh, take a step back, seek to see, it, right? It's a process. It's not a one and done experience, okay? Um, I did it this morning, um, okay? Um, but as I saw myself more through his eyes, it enabled me to see others through his eyes. And I've learned that that's how we love each other. We let so many differences get in the way, but when we seek to see one another in the way Christ does, it's powerful. And I've learned that love is the most powerful when it is channeled through him, the source of love. So I'm going to invite you all. Well, one thing I've learned real quick, um, I was um, just at this experience. There was a picture of Christ in front of me. And I just, I'd started to be more open about my story and let people in more, which is not an easy process. So I was feeling uncomfortable in my ward, and I was like, God, I really, it was just, it was a wrestle for me for about a year. I remember looking at this picture of Christ's feet. It was him walking um, in the sand by water. And I just remember being like, um, I'm done. This is so uncomfortable. And I felt him say to me in that moment, Spencer, I was never comfortable. And in that moment, I was able to relate to Christ just for a minute. I was able to see him and his pain and relate to his pain just a little bit more by sitting in my pain. Christ sees us and understands us so beautifully, so perfectly. We can understand him more if we use our pain to see him, who experienced more pain than we can even imagine. But we can understand him just a little bit more if we use our pain to understand his pain. And there's a connection there. There is unity in there, oneness. When we can do that, so I'm going to invite you all to look into this, the eyes of our Savior in this picture. I want you to ask him in this moment how he sees you. And if you need to close your eyes and envision Christ differently, that's just fine. How does Christ see you? And how can you relate to him through your experiences? How can you use your experiences to understand him? the one who has experienced it all. I testify of him. He is my why. He will always be my why, and I encourage you to let him be yours. I love you. 
I'm grateful for you all. You all strengthen me through sharing your stories, through being you, for showing up. Thank you for your testimonies, for your love. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.